means I must be wrong. Can I request that before we dive in, we appoint a scribe? And that we come up with a structure instead of just randomly talking about pretty websites. Oh my God. Um, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Can someone scribe? Since this is going to require mainly sharing my screen, I feel like I should not be scribing. I think all you really need to do is get the URLs down, and that's good enough. Um, it's etherpad.indieweb.org/slash perweb. Per web. I couldn't come up with a cleverer name. It's like Percy. Already personal, personal, personal website. Read into or whatever I was not trying very well. Um, so something I'm interested in is just if you have websites that personal websites that you think are pretty, or you think like one part of it is really pretty, like it handles comments or web mentions really beautiful. Um, I would love to just have people come up and like kind of parade and, or just tell me what URL and we can look at them on the screen and kind of discuss them. Uh, the main thing I want to get out of this session, and I would like to hear what you guys would like to get out of this, is that um, I often struggle to come up with good, like I Google like nice personal websites and like try to find elements that I like when I'm working on my own website, but I really struggle to like find a good crowdsource that's just about functional, pretty website design for personal websites, because often what you end up in is like corporate. Yeah. Corporate, or like you end up in a click hole of like Squarespace websites or like SEO WordPress theme posts. It's just really challenging, I feel like. And I know that a lot of people have really cool websites, and so I kind of just want to look at them and then have a list to come back to later. What else do other people? Why did you come? People that are here. I like inspiration. Okay. Yeah, it's out here. I'm not going to any of the other topics. Okay. <laughs> Least uh, to David no, wants to show off his own website, which is gorgeous. <laughs> I'm in the middle of rebuilding my site, so finding inspiration out of rebuilding is probably a good idea. Um, something I really struggle with is like beautiful websites that are also really functional for any web standards. So I feel like this is kind of relevant. Like I, as we were talking about earlier in the WordPress session, a lot of like the dominating stuff right now is kind of streaming your life on your website and like pushing things from all these silos into it and like finding ways to make that design look good is something that some people have done, but not that many, so. Um, I know the expression, great artists steal. <laughs> yeah. um, I just look at everybody else's and steal what I like. I, I definitely do that as well. I'm really a big fan of uh, I, I'll just jump in and point out a website I like, and then if you guys start having them, and if you can be your own website, feel free to submit yourself for review. Uh, uh, this is a website that is not done on a CMS, and but kind of looks like it's done on a CMS, but it's actually all just flat HTML. And um, I like it because it's a really clean, but photography heavy design. Um, and I think she has had an interesting approach to the way she's done her archives which is that her archives are entirely by category, um, but you can totally go through. She blogged every day for 10 years, so she's got an unreasonable amount of content on her website. Um, but as you can tell, it really is, it spans the gamut of what she talks about, and so I really like, I think that this is good for discovery and exploration um, for her website. That's about it. I like that. That's a good looking site. Yeah, I think it's nice and clean. Yes. It also is a, doesn't look too, um, I don't know how to put this, but a lot of websites now look the same. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where it's like, look at my massive hero image. And when you scroll, everything kind of doesn't scroll while it scrolls. And it kind of, everyone's, I feel like if you go to any brand's website now, and it you looks the, the same. website says, which of these two websites are you building now? Right. right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. And again, is this so dependent on things like Bootstrap and like, yeah. And this right. site feels like it is, it's it's got a very timeless design. Right? Yeah. It looks like it could have been created in 2007. And, and that's it, okay. It might very well have been because she I, did start blogging in 2005. But it, but but it, 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 it feels, good. it still is usable today, right? Because yeah. sometimes you go back to websites made in the early aughts that are like unreadable on modern day screens because they're optimized for like 800 by 600. And right. so they're, um, yeah. Does anybody else have any websites they want to look at? I was going to suggest, I remember Brennan Novak's, which oh, again, yeah. it appears to be offline now. Oh, no! Do you want to 
Uh, we could um, way back it. Yeah, that's what I was checking. I don't. It's a Brennan with two ends first. Yeah. And it'll be AK. I remember that his posts are really readable, which is also something I've really been particularly struggling with WordPress. I don't know about other folks, but the tendency now is not to have like things that are super readable long form on WordPress. And, Probably without the HTTPS. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Probably not what's crawled. Uh, let's look late. Maybe we should bug Brennan on his website. I haven't seen him in chat in a while. Oh, I'm currently rebuilding my life and my uh, website. Will we page Should I go back to Maybe essay, try essays. No, that was kind of what I recalled. Um, when you go, I think when you go to the, like an essay or something, it's just really nice typography, you know. Good use of white space. Archive that Mary is angry at me for how much I've used it today. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's got looks like he's got some fancy JavaScript, like baiting things in. Oh yeah. This is this is a similar typography style as the one that I was just kind of talking about. It's very black and white yeah. with good white space. Good contrast on link colors. That's actually something I'm kind of working on in my not very cool yeah. contrast for the rest of the text. Uh, but I think the tendency was that Bootstrap was kind of making everything too clean, uh, and I just did that. I have now yellow. I went back to underlines because we all decided uh, to abandon underlines for a long time, and it <laughs> turns out underlining is very effective for links. So. True, true. Um, I'll throw mine up there. Yeah. Clever Devil Dot I O. Autofill. I was looking. So I just use known, so I get, but I have customized the CSS to, to change the fonts and the colors, and I've done a lot of work on it. Um, but it's, you can see it's heavily, I filter on the front page, I only do long form posts in photos. Um, I don't put my check-ins there, I don't put, uh, so you have to scroll down to get to the point where I actually wrote something. There is, there is one. Yeah. Um, so there you go. And you have a full image. So does this disappear when I, so you just get a little hint of the yeah, background image exactly. in, in just mobile. A, um, I like it. And then if you go to, um, go to maybe activity, you can see like this is very much the known default like check-in view. Mm -hmm. um, you don't see my watch. I like, exactly. I like your leaflet map. Nice map. Base, but there. That's the one that comes in known by default. Nice. By the way, when you do a check in. Oh, and if you go great. to timeline, you can see my. This is like my short posts. Um, mm. and this is the one I like the least. Oh, look at that. It's nice. Uh, and quote. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, this is the part that probably needs the most love. So, I'm really interested in your filter posts. So, are there multiple layers of filter content? So can I filter? So, so if you filter by locations, is that going to pull out? If you filter locations, that's really going to find check-ins. That's all okay. it's going to find. You can't right now that I know of in Node have a post that is a post that has a location attached to it. Okay. It doesn't work that way. At least not that I know of. So these are all different post types, and that's there. There's only not possible. Not possible. There you go. Um, um, but these are all different post types, so post these types. are all unique categories. All unique categories. And yeah. then, it, it, like, technically speaking, my activity and timeline, those are just under the hood filtering the different things. Okay. But it, just giving it a nice... And you've got a nice, yeah. Your about page. Very good about page. Look at that. Very cute. I noticed no footer. No footer. Are you opposed to footers? No. I just haven't. No one doesn't come with one. Yeah. <laughs> and I haven't created one. Um... Um, so I really like Aaron Brecky's calendar view on his website for, I mean, it's, his is kind of unfair because he just does all the things, but, um, <laughs> uh, how do I find it?
find it is a good question. I like uh, I think it's 2017. Yeah, type a year in a month. Or just a year. And then, like, 06? Yep. Yeah, so like, oh I goodness. think this is really fucking cool. That is smart. It's a little overwhelming. Coexist. And it also, I also think that it makes it look a little religious to have like the star and the... Uh... Where does it spell out coexist? That's exactly what we were just talking about, yeah. Actually, I guess that's coffee. Uh, I told him that he should replace the noon with a Z and then it would be fine, but uh, anyway, I think this one is really interesting. That is really cool. Um, I also I like that he, he crams an absurd amount of content in his website, but you never see too much of it at once. And I think that is really nice. Anybody else have other websites they want to look at? Yeah, I have uh, recreated. Oh, yeah, I saw you did that. So there you go. Yeah. If you do the same thing on my site, you get the same re result. I got this new, wait, wait, on my homepage already? I got this new, I got the date in there. Oh, look at that. Yeah, so I got, this is today, and then you can click back for other things. And these are all the posts posted on that day. This is good. Uh, so I just did an RSVP, but if you, yeah, if you strip off the, nice. you get the month. Cool. Yours looks a little less religious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I use different icons. Yeah. I mean, I don't track my sleep, probably. The... <laughs> um, what does the emoji mean? Uh, it's actually an emoji reaction. So it's... To... Oh. To a post, I believe. Whew. Yeah, so I found this one sad. So I did, like, on, on Facebook, you got this react to where you can yeah. another nice. face. And this is the, the indie web equivalent of that. Then I just show the emoji. I like that. But I can send any emoji in this way, not just the, the Facebook one. Um, I like your header. It explains who you are, but it's very succinct, despite on every page. Yeah, yeah. Only on mobile, it's a bit long. So mm. maybe I, I should do something about that. But oh yeah. Um, yeah. Um. Okay, I want to go back to that page that that emoji links to. <laughs> And then we'll do yours. But what? What is it? This is great. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I just like this. Yes. Has a bunch of. <laughs> this is the, yeah. It's a Dutch comic, uh, uh, like as you can see with with photos. So it's actually strip is comic. So it's a photo comic. <laughs> and he is the I believe the first autobiography. Yeah. Well, I don't, can't read any of that, There's so. A <laughs> at the top. No, yeah, that's, a, yeah. I believe he, he got some translation in French, but yeah. That's like a translation well, well, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Google. Google. Google does some pretty yeah. well stuff. Um, Garbage. Okay, what's your website? Well, uh, Grants.co. Okay. 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 Oh yeah. my god, this is a lot going on here. This is really cool. Yeah, so uh, it's just a feed that uh, I want to take credit for the design. I had a designer friend help me do it. But, Looks uh, great. It works out quite well, yeah. So, and you have your lights on here. Yeah, there's a bunch of sort of ones that are hidden away as well. <laughs> oh my god. This is just, it just delights me. I just uh, want to scoop up your website. Yeah, so the other. Timeline page that I demoed basically shows all the different types of posts, but it's just absolutely full of location. Uh, what is what is just it? slash timeline? So that's the one with the map on the yeah. right. Yeah. How do you capture? How, how are you capturing all the? Yeah, yeah it's pretty. How did that's you pretty do this? badass. How yeah. do I make this yeah. happen in my life? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Who do I need to hire? So where's the location data coming from? How are you That's my phone? Uh, so you just like push to yes, using uh, the colors, scroll track, background, right? Yeah, uh, it's going back in the timeline. Yeah, I know. Own track? Yeah, own track. Is it iOS or Android? And then do you do the design for this part, or did you have a designer friend come with this part? Uh, I sort of built that myself. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like a sort of design system. 
if you Pat scroll back on my old, you'll see my trip to Seattle. Ice Contract. Uh, ice Contract is the one media uh, developer. Uh, mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah. 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 I have it set up, but I don't. I'm I don't do in love with it. But, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, so it does show everything else as well, but since that the locations so are cool. way, also, just fill it up with traffic. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but do you have plans to make this more readable than Latin Lounge, or are you happy with this? Yeah. yeah, it's like a hidden one. I might do some other view just for the locations a bit better. So I also don't know how the back slash mass. Yeah. just the cool, like. You can them yeah. Honestly, like, I didn't want to store my location yeah, until I, I saw yeah. that. So, <laughs> now you want it. So, so, oh, so oh, yeah, geo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What are you using to to move the map around as you scroll down? Just leaflet. Yeah, and you just say sends on this location. Yeah, and you just do that as like it scrolls through when when a post yeah, just you whenever you've got the okay, it just picks the ones scroll. at the top of the window. And, and then if I have a location on a post, you can still it still picks up that location. Thing, yeah. So the maps one, this is just the same <laughs> data, but just dots on every point that you were scrolling through. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it doesn't change because yeah. there's like. Hundred thousand dots now. <laughs> so if you if you start zooming out, it'll crash. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. move my, my. So I need to do something better than that. But it's the same data. It's just a different view. Yeah. Maybe as you zoom out, you could like kind of minimize the dots to just be like, okay, well now I'm just in Portland, or I'm just. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what I will do. Is, is someone yeah, saving all the URLs? I, I, I think they're supposed to be going into the Etherpad. They are. OK, yeah, great. Awesome. It's really it's very cool. Like, um, I had one that I wanted to do. So it's Andy. Right. Hold on. This is, I couldn't remember his URL, so I had to. <laughs> Andy J. Pizza. OK. Um, I, this is not an indie web one, but I just loved this web design. And it's, it's got the typical hero thing, but it's a little more silly and fun, I feel like. Um, I'm okay with it. Uh, <laughs> um, but it ends up communicating information, I think, really clearly. And the... I think there is, when you go into, oh yeah, when you go into the archive, I'm pretty sure it's it's built, this is built on Squarespace, but it just feels very, it doesn't look like every other Squarespace website. And I think some of that is due to the fact that he's a really phenomenal illustrator, and so it's got a lot of color, but yeah, I'm a fan of this one. Um, what else? What was it? You had one? Um, yeah, it's... Adam Dan, A D H A N D A N N A W A Y. There you go. First Google search result. Yeah, there you go. I like this. Okay. It's because like the he's a coder and a designer, and it's it's kind of like split. And if you hover over one side, it'll like. Oh, wow. nice. So it's just got a, it's got a nice cutesy. And this is Flash, or is it is it this is all well, it's just HTML5. HTML5. Nice. And I just kind of like the way he's split both sides of his work really into one thing. Yeah, that's very cool. Um, yes, yeah, so the blog. So something I've been interested in is blog archive pages. Does anybody have any good examples of fun? I, I have a good example. Um, if you go to v4. V4? Dot, yeah, exactly. Dot um, Jason Santa Maria, mm. which is a name that might be. Yep. Some people might know. Dot com. This is the old version of his website, which is just way, way better. Um, <laughs> if you hit, he does a different design for every single blog post. If you hit articles to see his archive, um, you'll see that he, if you scroll down, he made screenshots of the different posts. What? And if you scroll further down, there you get into some of the crazy designs he did for his posts. This is so cool! 
and you can just click any of the posts and a lot of them will have you have the by design tag and you can kind of look like oh i want to see blue posts posts that use the color blue a lot um, what? what and he he did in his, in his latest iteration of the website this is gone which oh. i think is the worst decision he's ever made yeah. um but he used to do these design for each and every post how often did he post well, he's, a, <laughs> he's an art director so like he's uh, sort of a bit obsessed with art direction he has that's a partly, vision yeah and that's partly his shtick so everything you know the art direction on the web and um, i think his comments are super interesting and i might just be interested in them because they look like the internet eight yeah. years ago yeah, exactly. and i miss it so that might be i mean this is the internet eight years ago yeah. <laughs> Um, but I like it. It's this is really fascinating to me because I'm very comfortable with print design and I struggle sometimes with translating that to the web. And I felt like it used to be easier when everything was just nested table sets. Um, that's harder to do now with dynamic web stuff. So one in a similar vein is Trent Walton. Welcome. I just want to play with this dude's website forever. Okay, TrentWalton.com. Yeah. Uh, so his articles are like not as art directed, but I think he does have custom headers on each one. Okay, so I think that the article. Is this is this one an article? No. Yeah, it's pretty cool though. What? The whole website. Okay. Um, that's, the, that's like his. Each one has got its own. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Well, it's nice. So, it just, yeah. so it's very medium style. Yeah. yeah. So that's something that I've been intrigued by is that we had about 10 minutes where everybody wanted their website to look like medium, and about 25% of the internet managed to succeed in that, I feel like. And then I feel like it's died, but the thing that's frustrating me for me, I didn't like all the websites looking the same, but I did think that the beautiful part of Medium was that they were focused on readability first. And um, I have been, I was kind of hoping the reading thing was actually going to be about making really beautiful, readable long form books. <laughs> and, and so, yeah, I've been, does anybody have any great examples of like interesting readability for long form or just generally on websites? Um, I think that something that Bootstrap did is it really compressed H1 and H2 and H3 and made everything kind of look very similar. And uh, I've been really interested in like, people used to do artsy CSS for their quotes and for their H their H tags, and I feel like that's kind of died. Uh, Kartik, he does, it's uh, K-A-R-T-I-K, P-R-A-D-H-U.com. P-A-R-E-R-A-D-H-U. No, you're fine. No. P-A-R-E-H-U. That's P-R-A, sorry. Apparently he died? No. It's, yeah. Okay. So I just, it auto-filled death. Oh, that's weird. Um, I think pretty much every post he does, he has like kind of custom indentation and alignment, you know. Uh, it's got articles like at the bottom, I think. Yeah. He also does some uh, photo gallery posts. Oh yeah, he's very into the like, use the whole page kind of. Right, yeah, yeah. takes good advantage of his white space. I like that headers on the web. What? Oh. Another interesting design, an another interesting design might be, was it called Snowfall? Yeah. New York Times did? Yeah. Which kind of blew up? Yeah. That's a big one. Wow. So much parallax. Yeah, it's killing my browser here. <laughs> that was the, the, the piece that in 2012 when it came out ruined scrolling for the rest of time. Yeah, scroll jacking <laughs> for the. <laughs> what it, what it's incredible. Does? Oh, wow. Jesus. Lord Almighty. At, remember, 2012. When this came out, this was a big like big life deal. change. Yeah, the big deal. Before every person used Squarespace yeah. and did the same thing. Um, Can I then show you something from Sublime to the ridiculous potential? I've just yeah. Like, okay, I've just put it. This in is there. my favorite. All right. This is what this session is. All right. So I've just popped it in the in the pad. 
So Bloomberg did a design conference a couple of years ago, and I guess they really wanted to make a statement. So they did this site, which is whoa, whoa, uh, whoa. Yeah, move the mouse around and oh my god. So you know, like I must say, like it, it, it gets tied very quickly, but it, it got a lot of attention. Right? It was so, like someone discovered it, HTML5 and then like drank a bunch of caffeine. But you know, it's it was interesting because like so Bloomberg, <laughs> Bloomberg, you know, if you think through the brand, right? They're kind of these the Bloomberg terminal, which is this standard terminal everyone in finance looks at, and then when they they got the huge amount of art direction to their website, uh, and the, which wasn't quite as excessive as this. And then, Built this the, sort of part of this whole brand message that we get design, and we, you know, and which, you know, like we like the Financial Times. To, so to me, it's I'm not saying we should build websites like this, but I, you know, it's a pretty courageous thing for a certain kind of organisation yeah. to do. Right? You can see it being a, like a, a 16 year old kid's kind of private site. This, this conference sold out like thousand plus tickets at thousands of dollars each in eight minutes. Yeah. Right. right. So you know, commercially, it was pretty successful. Right. Okay. That's good. Um, right. This actually brings up, I, I'm interested, I'm really into animated GIFs, which probably belies my generation, um, but I am curious about good uses of animated GIFs that you've seen, as opposed to terrible uses of animated GIFs. Or animation GIF. in general? Yeah, or animation in general. I, I think GIFs are a little more accessible than yeah. Flash. Yeah, yeah. But, um, I mean, now with the CSS, there's so many different animation yeah. you know, capabilities. Well, I think it's underutilized and, and overutilized at the same time. Right, right. and so every parallax people, website has right, like the right, like, right. oh, I have a pencil that appears and then sharpens right. or whatever. Right. As opposed to you know giving cues about transitions and, and yeah. so on, which you know, so I think we underuse it well and overuse it badly. Yeah. Right. Um, does anybody have any great animation examples? This was <laughs> crazy yeah. and awesome. That was yeah. a really cool one. Um, we're gonna get into examples of bad things. There is a. <laughs> I'm no, actually, pretty I'm websites. Argue, I'm pretty not, websites. I'm not gonna actually argue that this is bad. I think it is out there, and it was on. But you know, like, you, this was a one-off, right? And it, it, it achieved commercially in a lot of other ways what it was trying to achieve. But mm -hmm. and one of the reasons why we didn't see loads of these, but we did see lots of snowfalls, was because this this had its own unique. Well, whatever, yeah, and right? I feel like I also feel like Bloomberg. It's adorable when they do this. And you're like, wow, that's a big brand departure. Right, right. But like, if a cutesy conference was to do this, you're like, oh, can I really talk seriously? Like, blah, blah, right, blah. You right. know, they already have the trust, right? right so right. they can break it. Whereas, yeah. right? Yeah. It's like the you know design. You can break all the rules but one. Or, right. You know, going kind of, going back a little bit to archives, I'm a little bit fond of my own. I know I'm biased. Oh yeah. Craigalove.com/archives. I took a little bit of inspiration from Tumblr. So Ooh. I scroll down, it goes up to like five per. I hmm. like it. That's pretty nice. That's um, very cute. And actually, click on notes too. Um, what are is this all your own or is this a CMS? It's custom. It, it is a CMS, but it's all basically customer HTML. Go to click through to one of those on the permalink. Oh, no. Sorry, that was the wrong permalink. Uh, scroll down a little bit. The date. Yeah. There you go. Uh, and then scroll down. Those blue dots, that's like my posting frequency. And actually, I think if you hover over it, it says, no, it doesn't. But yeah, I did, yeah, kind of like GitHub. So, and I actually, I do want to like link those to. That's cool. Uh, like, I want to link that to that specific date so you see everything I post from. I like your super intense butter there. Thank you. It's like, it's definitely, I feel like full. Uh, there. So I put the, the link in the bottom. We don't have to look at it now, but uh, there is someone on Reddit decided it would be fun if they had a contest to see who could design the worst volume slider. Oh my gosh! And it's one of the most amazing things that you'll ever see. It's, it's, it's you can save it to later unless you want to break from uh, beautiful. It's pretty amazing. Oh my gosh! Some of them are beautiful in their own way. I they love are some, all beautiful in their own way. I love that people actually made some of them work too in JavaScript. Yeah. Um, so I added another one. I saw the both of these from Italy Free, the Smashing Magazine founder. He talks about this. So you probably find videos online. So it's the it's the worst hotel in Amsterdam, legendarily bad, and they embraced that with brand spirit and built this website. What so it's it? called the Hans Brinker Hotel. Like uh, Hansbrinker.com. I put the link in the internet. Um, yeah. So it'll like it, if you look at it, like it has all these reviews about how bad it is, but then they've gone and embraced. 
And in fact, they've been so good at being bad that it's now in Lisbon as well, right? <laughs> and but they aren't like good to be bad. They are t- apparently terrible, right? And they've gone and embraced the whole thing. They, they you know, they, they got apparently they got a, a, a well-known comedian to write all the copy. <laughs> right? So <laughs> that's great. Uh, it, it really, I think, what? you know, they write, uh, what do we do? <laughs> Spend millions in putting a hotel? More honesty, less of everything else. Right. <laughs> so it's beautiful. Like, I think it's really important. Like, it's great copy. It's really well written. Um, but even, like, even the <laughs> look, look, look at that. So look, good. Look, That's look so at the typography oh, so it's bad. So, oh, exactly it's so right. good. So. Um, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a great bit of, like, it is right again on brand. It incorporates language <laughs> use. And, and it's very late. It's very kind of print layout. Yeah, right. So like a fly that would be on like, like, yeah. a telegraph pole, right? Yeah. <laughs> Stay at that. Hand. Right, but but almost more like like bad print. Like someone right. doesn't <laughs> know how to use it. <laughs> So, so they've been embraced all these kind of I, like this is actually very well designed oh, intentionally really? in oh, a yeah. like yeah oh, it's kind knowing of... and it, yeah it's, it's every aspect of it is really well done right um, so many plants it's incredible wow oh and then it's got the side like, oh, no. so, so I'm but, actually really interested in something like this for um, four day posts so all these people mm. have their their individual day that you can see everything that they might be like live streaming to their website from any web. And I, I actually think that clicking through and getting a picture of the day this way, as opposed to reverse chronological would be very interesting as like a navigating your life sort of thing. And with those sweet maps. So I want those maps forever now. So. Ugh, there's, has anyone read the outline before? I can't stand their design. And maybe I'm just uh, designed by proxy.com. Oh, it's not an official UMM Memories designer. Got a nice site. So I was looking at the Bloomberg page, and I thought about um, there's a guy who does a little bit of playing with Hoover styles on links, seaninman.com. Sean Inman's great. Edmund? Inman. Inman. I am Inman. <coughs> I'd say say U N. Is it? Is it? Yeah, A U N. Yeah. A U. Yeah. Check it out. You got it. Okay. That's the one. So if you Hoover his links, the links will try and follow your pointer, and then they snap back into place. I like it. But he's also like he. He can tell. He does a lot of eight bit games. Um, he sort of was very early in the kind of eight bit stuff. He's been doing this for over a decade. Like this. Yeah, if, if you go back to his landing page, um, and hang on, change the pendium behind the URL to packed, and then you then you come to his old landing page, which is the eight bit one. Oh, that's wow. fine. Um, also, how do you know all these people's old URLs? Why are you? <laughs> because everything stuck in my head. <laughs> Um, no, I think that's pretty This sick. is really cute. Yeah. I liked his archives page too. It was unique in the structure, I felt like. I'm not in- his previous <laughs> blog had different colors for every, I think, month, I want to say. And you could watch his archive and you would see this whole color gradient go. Oh. Um, yeah. You probably have to check the web archive for that. I'm not sure if Sean has an old version link. What was he doing in 2001? He even, he, uh, he even put the images in his Flickr. So if there's a link to his Flickr page, you should be able to see it there. He put screenshots of his blog on Flickr oh, because of cool. the way the color was evolving over time. I don't see his Flickr. Uh, and he even invented an image replacement technique called the image. Oh. So if you've ever used those, he, he invented pretty much the first image replacement team. Interesting. It's been doing this a long time. Uh, anybody else? Fun websites? Do you work uh, mentioning any of the, the websites where you can go and find like lists of all these mm-hmm. websites that aren't like around? Yeah. Does anybody have good? I don't know. Yeah. Like a blog roll? Yeah, blog rolls, since apparently we're bringing them back. <laughs> Ten 
Honey, we're bringing back web rings. That's what's really happening. <laughs> I would totally support an Inuit web ring. Let's do this. Yeah, let's do this. <laughs> Except Except add block is over. <laughs> add blockers would block every one of them, right? Yeah. They look like ad ads. So. Have you ever seen them? No, oh, they would just be what? plain HTML oh, links. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be fine. Because the way the web ring would be is that you just had a permanent place in the but web no, ring. That were, were images. No, it's typically images. Uh, my, no. You could just do a plain text one with two oh, okay. arrows back and forward. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I always remember it was being images which like would get automatically loaded because the web ring was kind of randomly generated. Right? It wasn't like yeah. you always had that link to that particular website. It would be you sort of opted in. It depends on how well the web ring was set up. <laughs> There's one called yeah. uh, so glad this is where we're hotlinewebring.com. <laughs> What is it? <laughs> it's dot com. That's actually rather nice. Um, dot club. Oh, oh club. I'm so happy. <laughs> and it's really easy. You basically link to them. You you pick a slug like your so I'm Gregor Love. So you'd be like you link to hotlinewebring dot club slash Gregor Love as your next. Oh, and you already registered next, and then they club. handle it. Dang it. So so your link is always the same. Maybe the same. I mean we might be able to find who that person is. I'm looking. Someone, is it our enemies? It's someone in Germany. This is on our uh, resume. Chances the way. are it's our friend. I, probably young. I think somebody might. Have, I don't know if they stopped in China. What? Really? It's on GitHub. I don't know who that is. It's it's Joshi. Joshi? Yeah, he organized uh, a bunch of the stuff that just went down in Germany, the indie web camps out there. Darn it! Well, we need to get in touch with Joshi and tell him we want to make an indie web web ring on indie web. All right. All right, someone put that in action items for this session, <laughs> which is I don't know how we got there, but we're there. Uh, any other like any other great examples of like treatment of H or like fun treatments of H tags or of quotes? I'm I'm particularly interested in really fucking cool shit that people do with CSS. Like I love whimsical I love whimsical CSS that isn't terrible to read. So we had a great presentation. I'll try and dig it up. Like the things you can actually do with CSS and whimsical. Um, type now with gradients in sort of inside mm -hmm. play and, and effects that are pretty short. Let me see if I can dig up that now. Yeah, you can do some really amazing um, stuff. Here's a site while he's digging that up. Yeah. KeithJGrant.com. So Keith is the guy who wrote OmniBear. He's actually an IndieWeb community member. And if you go to his oh, little yes. menu on the left hand side, Balance. I like that a lot. Ooh. It's got a nice, like, kind of yeah. fade in and out. Welcome to the future. And this is very CSS. He's writing a book on CSS. So if you want some it's interesting uh, CSS, he's a, he's a guy to look. And what's that cool, like, dodge effect on the text at the top? It's so nice. It is yeah. nice. Yeah, yeah it's and it's pretty, real text. It's not, yeah. yeah. It's, nice. pretty, it's pretty shiny. His about page is nice, too, actually. I feel very calmed yeah. by this website. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. nice. Another just random nice little is is this still getting in the wiki? No, just the, the or that you can find? Cool. I don't know who's scribing. Someone scribing. Party is okay. A couple of those are. It's a little half Uh how do I spell this? J I M. Oh Like that? Uh no, yeah. Uh, Oh. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa! What is going on in my life? Wow. Oh. What's going on in his life? Alright, we're going to uh, do that so, again so in case anybody missed it. Whoa! Oh, <laughs> oh, that's gorgeous. Uh, yeah, this is nice. Oh, I like the featured articles thing. Word counts, too, is a thing I really want to have. This, uh, this is good. Word counts is so is versus time. Has anyone been on very nice sites before? Is that a, is that a oh, like, oh, aggregator? Wait, yeah, yeah. So, so the heat, this website is on there. It's just very nice sites .com, I think. Yeah. Um, and it's just this massive list of beautiful websites. That's what I've been hunting for yeah. in my life. Um, the, the downside, and so the reason that I came to this is I feel like um, whoever's Piling them is running out of very nice sites, and they're starting to get. Um, so that's why I kind of showed up here because it's like, okay, well, maybe there's something new. But yeah. This giant site, good enough sites, I guess. Um, I just realized that I, I think I put in my to do list. I put in. Reading. Reading list. Andy Miller. Oh, what is that? 
This is my to-do list. I'm, I think oh. I had marked a link in for pretty websites, but I didn't find the website I'm looking for. I thought you were like doing something on this site. And I was no, that would be really super cool. cool. Sorry, guys. I just don't have a lot of screen real estate. Um, this is really nice. <laughs> Word count is interesting versus time red because I don't necessarily try. I don't really believe those time read things, things, especially because they don't know. I like come back to come back to since they failed to take on my tests. <laughs> yeah. Are they aggregating? Oh, are they actually yeah, tracking and then averaging out how long it takes to scroll to the bottom? I think most of them are just word count. Children. Yeah, I don't think there's very good you know, machine learning involved. So you can just, you know, yeah, so it's like, like, it'd be funny if there was machine learning, learning and then track based on your tab being open for a week. So it's like, rent them one week. Um, <laughs> does anybody have good examples of good podcast um, pages? Yeah, That's pages, particularly yeah. podcast like permalink pages for the RSS feeds. So, so, so either Mark and, and Kevin Grant do like huge useful responsive web design, and they have one up on If you go to a responsive web design podcast, they have a special. They have a they have a site just for the, the podcast and that's really nicely designed. And each of the like each of the episodes have that there, and then you click through to the episode. Oh, and, and it's pull, pull quotes and you know, like, I, this is the and they have the transcripts. And yeah. this is what stops me doing podcasting because I, you felt like <laughs> I do think you're recording it earlier, and then like it's so good, right? So, um, uh, this is cool. I feel like that's rare. I got, I got a podcast too, maybe. Maybe? You maybe have a podcast? Uh, no, I don't have one, but uh, I know one. It's insert user, but then .nl. So it's in Dutch, and you yeah, you can listen to it, but you won't understand. Ins oh, dot insert user. Oh, so, user. User, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Oh, it's got that parallax going on. This is nice. Yeah, and it's it's uh, if you click on it, it also like if you start playing it, it says. Um, uh, this is cool. It has all the links oh, for those it's icons. Oh, that all it's actually. Oh, a, uh, God, no! <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> what? Are these quotes? No, these are or... links to things in the podcast. Oh, my oh and it moves around. Oh, and it page. moves around the page. As you're listening live. Yeah, and, and as you listen, it, it's actually scrolling through the whole thing. So you always have the right link on the right. Are they yeah, selling yeah, this? Because <laughs> I'll buy it. No. it <laughs> yeah. Who did? It's actually also an interesting podcast. This year, it's in Dutch, so you can't uh, yeah. do anything. But it's, it's a nice it's one. Audio content. This is a great design. Uh, now, here's the real question: Do you get a permalink that that to a specific bookmark in the in the episode? So, if you like, click on a specific time. Does it like generate a? Yeah, click pause. Oh, you no, I believe they don't. No. Ha! Well, that's just this one. Say garbage. Garbage. <laughs> garbage. So I've worked, that was what I flagged this in my cool little presentation. <laughs> that's, that's kind of a it's like the sound pain point. Oh, it's point. just the link oh, directly to the podcast. Podcast. <laughs> but the way I've done it for video, it's always the sound file. Transcripts. The transcripts. Yeah, I want. And then I have a little bit of JavaScript that synchronizes the transcripts with the, the video itself. Yeah. And then you, each piece of the transcript is a fragment. And when you link to the fragment, it triggers the video synchronization. That's, that's so it allows you to do yeah. the text. Yeah. So yeah. Something yeah. I've struggled yeah. with with just oh, wow. podcast pages is um, having it, because I host it on my own domain, is having the podcast go up to the RSS and not get junked up with too much stuff for our iTunes to read, but then have a good host page. Yeah. And like that's something I really struggled with. So I'm really curious what this looks like syndicated on like, are, they're clearly not hosting this. It has links to iTunes, RSS, and SoundCloud. So, I suspect that this iTunes... That's just, just a link to iTunes? iTunes? Well, I would well this is just all of iTunes. I think that was not meant to be that way. Um, we're finding lots of problems with those website. Uh, uh, speaking of those those uh, hash links, though, before you're talking about yeah. Like, yeah. pause, I know Aaron, on his audio, when you 
or you videos, I think, where you mm -hmm. pause, it updates the URL automatically. With that. Yeah. I use yeah. the same thing, yeah. So you can make, like, you can give people links that will even play just certain parts. Oh, nice. Yeah. But um, is that, that's dependent then on an API, a video API? Yeah, it's most browsers support it, uh, but if you, yeah. most support it if you like put it in the URL to the yeah, media file. If you want to support right. it in the yeah. page, you need a little support. Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, there's a, yeah. another podcast uh, site somebody yeah. here, uh, Jim works on, it's at Geekouts XYZ. And this is another interesting like moving player, so it's got a live transcript. And if you hit play, like it, it karaoke style highlights and moves. Oh, okay. Or yeah, if it gets in your way. Well, it just really wants you to know that it's a prototype. <laughs> That's really good. See, now, if you click a part, does it jump to the audio? Yes. Why I built it is you can click in the transcript, it jumps to the audio video. Yeah. 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 And if you scrub the that, it synchronizes the thing. Yeah. It's playing. Yeah, it does. Right, it does. Yeah. That's cool. I want that. Can I have that? Also, yeah, how that's... much time does it take to upload these freaking podcasts, guys? If if you've got this, like this must be like a three hour process to get to get this up after recording the podcast. Do you mean the size of the file? Or no, no, no. I mean like tagging the whole transcript. To... So I we I don't I do with the conference videos. Like we, I, it's worth my while getting the services like rev.com, but it's like fifty dollars an hour. Yeah, and you got to mark up and everything. This, it's still a fair to do. Yeah, Jim, Jim, and I were talking about this. He says there's a, a big process. Like there's software that makes a lot of this automated, but it's a long pipeline to set up. So like it even has something that will take a, a good transcript and align it, so it'll like put in all the timestamps. So, so this can be done with yeah. machines. Yeah, oh, yeah. at least like well, a good chunk you, of it. You probably want humans to do, do the final. transcript. We are, my, I think in a couple of years, we're like, getting, no, we're machines. almost getting it. We're 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 captioning now. Yeah, yeah. Right? We're not quite there yet. And I think that'd be profound, like profound change. You still at the moment, you, you, a human's got to do it. Yeah. Right? Um, but it's pointless. Well, I think they're there, just about there. Yeah. Yeah. Right, 18 months from now. But this is amazing. I'm so glad we're doing this session, guys, because my mind's getting blown. Um, any other websites do you want to do? Podcasts or otherwise? Is there a website? I've just added some screenshots from old Sean Inman stuff to the Etherpad. Oh. Just look for the pink. Uh, up a bit, it's under the Sean Inman ah. parts. So there are two screenshots there. Um, this one is reddish and the other one is orangish and you can see that its entire design just changes the background color and he had all the fonts adapt their color to the new background color. Very cool. Um, so there's another there's another screenshot for comparison, uh, the link right below. So I, I started to do that on my site and whenever I update it, it picks one of like six colors and yeah, so Sean just went through time, it slowly changed. Um, and the third link I added was another landing page that he had before the two that we've already looked at. Um, but I couldn't find the actual link, so you'll have to make do with a very small screenshot. Uh, <laughs> and on, on that one, the thought bubbles would follow your cursor, if I remember correctly. Uh, that's cool. So those would react in the same way as the links on his current landing page do, but this was just an image one. So from an Inuit standpoint, I would be really interested in changing those background colors and the CSS of the text based on post types. So all my RSVPs are red backgrounds mm -hmm. with a certain kind of font, and all of my all of my web mention responses are this way. Um, I know some people are, are kind of doing that as far as how they display on the page, but I think it'd be kind of interesting to have like a unified design aesthetic, except for the colors changing yeah. <laughs> based on post type. I am. Um, if anybody wants to design that WordPress theme for me, just let me know. Ages ago, a company I worked for, we built a CMS. Because that's a good idea. <laughs> uh, where's Ben? Um, and uh, w one of our features that we had was uh, it, it had like this um, sky at the top of the, the admin interface when you were writing. 
the based upon their location, it would actually show like the if it was at nighttime, it would actually show like a, an evening with like a moon and stars. Oh, yeah. and if it was daytime, it would show the sun rising or whatever, um, and it would animate during the day. So if you're like doing a very long post, the idea was like that you could be writing and then it would just you know kind of the sun would just rise behind you. Uh, didn't get used at all, but it was really cool. <laughs> yeah. I like those idea of things that change. So are you looking to do so like the Facebook thing where they have the big backgrounds now? And well, th that's actually, that's a thing that I'm really struggling with, the big colored backgrounds, is that they're very effective for um, Facebook algorithms right now because they're trying to incentivize people doing them. Yeah. I don't think that's going to last very long because now they're already being overused, but... Um, but I can't posse those through my own website. So, um, and what I end up posseing is image posts that look like that that are cuter because I can use whatever font I want. Um, <laughs> but obviously, like image posts are kind of terrible as far as searchability. So, um, right. Yeah, I, and that's just a general IndieWeb problem that we are like obviously not going to solve tomorrow. So. Right. It's something that like you could take on and. An individual person could be like, oh, if it's less than this many words, they show a different thing, but yeah. there's not like a. Well, and you can't posse it from your own website to that Facebook right. type. Yeah, there's no way to do that. Facebook doesn't have the API for it. Yeah. yeah. There's even different locations on Facebook. Like you have to, I think you have to go to the home page and create a status to get the background thing. If yeah. you're like on your feed, and you yeah. just like, like what I'm thinking, it doesn't show up there. Well, and not everybody has all the backgrounds and everything right now because they're rolling it out based on whims. Ick. Just ick. That's all. Yeah. And we should close on the bad volume sliders. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely a thing. Uh, uh, all right. Right and there. We had a very positive session, so we're going to yeah. end with a it's little It's inspiration bit of for you all. Um, there's there's animated gifts of them, so they're, they're very fun. Um, <laughs> that was, that was my, it gets much worse. Keep going. It gets much, much worse. <laughs> You're doing it. This one's my oh, favorite. Oh, I love that. Oh. <laughs> it launches the whole That's time. the one that someone made work in JavaScript. Yeah, that one actually does work. Uh, that's mine. This <laughs> Make it laugh. <laughs> 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 does someone like that work? Uh, no. But well, the volume would, would be so loud because I would be laughing the at it. The very best one is is uh the last <laughs> one. <laughs> this roll. <laughs> like, hold dice. <laughs> Deflates over time. <laughs> to keep it pumping. <laughs> it's like the advanced volume control. Just like if you just like give an elevator lift. So what you that one I really like. Set by the zero increase. <laughs> this is the best one of all. We have automatically adjusted your volume based upon your latitude. To change your volume, simply move your device to a new location. Keep walking north. <laughs> Yeah, you can see her. It's pretty good. Um, yeah, that was really cool. Thank you. That, I think we're done. <laughs> no one misses out on the most geeky one, though. Someone programmed it. Uh, he showed his terminal. His volume adapted based on yeah. how far his laptop was opened. Oh, oh, just your screen. Oh, my God. That's really good. All right. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Um, Thank so, someone put very nice sights in the Etherpad, too. Okay, sweet. Thanks for scribing, everybody who scribed. Yeah. Good session. Thanks for coming up with a good idea for a session. <laughs>